Right, so happy GIS Day, everyone. I hope you've had a really good day so far. Uh, my name is Lorian Innes, and I am the Regional Manager for ESRI for Eastern Africa. And it is my pleasure to talk to you very briefly about Africa Geo Portal. I'll then hand over to my colleague, Paulino Keo, who will give you a demonstration of how to get started with Africa Geo Portal. But first, I want to highlight the importance of uh, technology and innovation in Africa. Africa is having a rapid growth in internet penetration. Um, there's like a 20% increase in internet usage per year, which is massive. And by 2025, the expectation is that 6 million users in Sub-Saharan Africa will have a mobile internet. Uh, African leaders have also acknowledged the importance of uh, ICT uh, for economic growth and show social progress across the continent. And really ICT and GIS are transforming businesses and how governments act and are really driving entrepreneurships as well as innovation. So as we support this innovation by providing geospatial tools and data through Africa GeoPortal. And in a nutshell, Africa GeoPortal is a platform for online data sharing mapping, analysis, and collaboration across Africa. Or as uh, Jack Dangerman puts it uh, far more elegantly, we are deeply committed to supporting innovation in Africa, helping users discover, explore, and understand the vast information available to them through the power of maps. So the vision of Africa GeoPortal is really to be a, a one-stop shop for geographic contents and a comprehensive web GIS tools. And this platform is free for anybody to use. Um, you can easily uh, create an account or you can uh, link an existing uh, social media, media accounts like Facebook, Google, Apple or GitHub uh, to Africa GeoPortal and get started. There's four key areas really that I wanted to talk about. So first of all, Africa GeoPortal provides access to geospatial tools for mapping as well as for analysis. So for those of you who are familiar with um, uh, ArcGIS Online, it basically provides the same tools as you would have in, in ArcGIS Online. And it also provides you with field applications that you can use and take out on your mobile devices to start collecting your own data. We also have a vast range of learning resources that we provide. Uh, you can even create your own learning path to either get started or to uh, advance your knowledge. And recently we opened a, up a uh, mentoring program as well. So you can engage through, uh, through other mentors to get, get started and keep going. You'll find a, a number of user stories shared by Africa GeoPortal users and intended to encourage and inspire others um, and I would really like to uh, encourage you to have a look at those. Some of them are absolutely fantastic. And lastly, you can access an authoritative collection of African geospatial data through the Africa Living Atlas. The data in Africa Living Atlas comes from a number of contributors. Uh, it includes ESRI curated data, first and foremost, which consists of a large set of analysis ready data. This includes base maps, imagery, demographics data, environmental data, and much more. But we also have a large number of countries, regional and global organizations that contribute to Africa GeoPortal. Uh, and on this slide here, you can see an example of some of the country pages that we already have, uh, which includes Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Rwanda, and Ethiopia. And, and this is growing. More countries are interested in, in providing that data on, on Africa GeoPortal. We also have a large number of global and regional uh, organizations contributing. Uh, this includes organizations like NASA, FAO, Digital Earth Africa, OpenStreetMap, uh, and also RCMRD. Um, and of course, you as a user can also contribute your own data to Africa GeoPortal. This is an example of RCMRD's uh, GeoPortal page. And from this page, you can explore the RCMRD data, maps, and applications. And for example, have a look at their work on protected areas. So as ESRI, we're really committed to Africa GeoPortal and to, to providing this platform for users who were working either in or on Africa. 
And, and as ESRI, we are committed to keep the platform running as long as it is needed and used. Um, also in support of project data, so it continues to be accessible. And really what we're looking at is to create a portal of portals where we are referencing or hosting geospatial data regardless of the source of where this data is coming from. It's all gathered and, and disseminated through a central portal. So with that, actually, I wanted to hand over to my colleague Pauline, who is uh, going to pro provide a, um, an overview of how you can get started, which is far more interesting than uh, looking at slides. So I'd like to thank you for having me here and um, to address this wonderful crowd of GIS professionals. And I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your GIS day. So with that, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Pauline Okeo. Pauline, I'll stop sharing. Okay, thanks, Lorian. Let me just start sharing my screen. As uh, Lorian has given a good um, introduction to what we have with Africa Geoportal, uh, for you to be able to access it, you can just use uh, the URL given there, or you can just simply go and search uh, on whichever browser you're using for Africa Geoportal and you'll be directed to this particular site. So from here, you're able to see all the different other portals that are linked to Africa Geoportal. Uh, as you've been able to see throughout the year with the visualization of COVID data, we have a data that is specific to different countries, uh, organizations and agencies, as well as all the data for Africa. We've also been able to link this to uh, the FAO um, site for, for the Desert Locust Hub. Um, as well as uh, what we have for Alda Nepad and so on. So from that point, as you scroll, you'll be able to see we have a number of countries and agencies that have provided their data for use um, throughout the region. And one of the country pages we have is for Ethiopia. And if you go there, you'll be able to see data specific to Ethiopia that has been shared by a number of agencies um, in Ethiopia. And from that point, for the people who are in uh, Ethiopia who may want to access this information uh, in a language that they may be more familiar with or um, um, comfortable with. We have the ability to just apply translation to different languages. And from that point, you'll see that the geoportal automatically just uh, translates this uh, content into something that uh, it's possible for users to be able to um, utilize. From there, we have a catalog of data sets that have been shared by different organizations as well as the Ethiopia Geoportal. And that's just the standard format we have for the agencies as well as the countries uh, for you to be able to access the data, use the tools to be able to interact with the data, and finally to use the learning resources we have. So um, for the learning resources, this just leads you to the ESRI Academy where you're able to uh, just interact with some of the courses we have freely available for you to take advantage of. So for you to be able to start using the Africa Geo Portal, it's very easy. You can just uh, sign up and you can use um, your standard sign up details. That is your standard credentials, but you're also free to use some of your social media accounts. So in my case, um, sorry, in my case, uh, I've been using my Gmail account and that's what I'll just basically use to allow us to explore uh, the rest of the portal. So if I come to tools, uh, that particular page, I'll be able to see uh, the different tools that you have access to. And in my case, uh, again, I would like just to start using uh, a map viewer to be able to just visualize data and do a bit of analysis and so on. So once you get to the map viewer within Africa Geoportal, you're able to add data, you're able to do a bit of analysis on the data, and finally, you're able to save this data information as a map and share it with different kinds of users. For you to be able to add the data, you can easily just search for layers, you can browse for what we have on the Africa Living Atlas and use other ways for adding data, such as data on other servers and so on. So in my case, for browsing the Living Atlas, I can just simply look for some of the basic data sets that we have there. And uh, to do that, I can just simply put in some tags uh, or some information that I'd be, like to be able to just access, um, which, is, which is now visible. 
So from that point, I have two results. And from that, I can just easily explore the data that has been put there. So what we have um, within the Living Atlas being authoritative content, it's usually marked as authoritative, something within the Living Atlas and something that's available to people who have login credentials or do have accounts within Africa Geoportal. And as I just look through the description of the data, I can see that it's something that's useful and I can easily add it to the map. Still working with other data, I'm able to search for data that has been added by other people. And in this case, um, if I'm looking at content by other people or not just online, because as Lauren had mentioned, this is a portal of portals where people have put in content from um, various locations or different kinds of people have put in this content and so on. So I'll just be able to, again, use some key tags to just search for this information. And as I search for it, I'm able to use the filters just to specify the kind of items I'd like to add to my map, as well as uh, maybe filter or sort this information based on the dates that it was modified. So in this case, if I was to look at that, um, I can see like we have something that's quite recent in the past couple of uh, months. And uh, if I explore that particular user, I'd be able to see that this person who's actually published this data, I can see the other data sets that they've been able to publish and so on. And from there, I can just decide if this is data I'd like to use in my visualization and so on. So as you can see uh, with Africa Geoportal, we are giving you an easy way for you to just access the data, uh, add it to your map and start interacting with it. So in my case, as someone who's very interested in supporting uh, some of the authorities that are involved in um, the upcoming distribution of vaccinations, as, as you're aware, we finally have a uh, vaccination for um, COVID, uh, which may be heading our way in a few months. And maybe I'd like to start the conversation with different kinds of people in terms of how can we best distribute these um, vaccines across the country. So um, as I was exploring my data, I was able to see that this particular data set has information on the total population. And I'd just like to use uh, some of this information as well as my own data that I may have and be able to add it. So I have a CSV. And in this case, the CSV has information on county, um, the county information on some of the respiratory risks that people are facing or the ratio of respiratory risks by country, as well as access, access to medical practitioners within the country. So I can easily add this information um, I can easily add this information on display to my map just by simply dragging and dropping my CSV. And you'll see that automatically um, Africa Geoportal is able to um, visualize this information using the geocoder we have. And I can just scroll to use the country geocoder, which is uh, Kenya. And I can just specify that I'd like this to uh, perhaps use address and uh, places. So you can see that that information has just been added over there. I can visualize it again based on the smart uh, mapping uh, capability we have within Africa Geoportal and just be able to visualize this information and so on. Um, other than that, as I said, Africa Geoportal gives you the ability to do analysis and we have a number of tools that actually support that. So you're able to summarize your data, manage your data, do a, a different kinds of uh, pattern analysis and so on. So in my case, because I have my CSV with data that I'd like to join to my country, I can just use the join tool to be able to just select that I want to join my CSV data, which contains the ratios to my country boundaries, uh, sorry, my county boundaries so that I'll be able to just visualize this information by county. So I'll just set a few capabilities, uh, sorry, a few parameters which have been defined or which you can get further details from the icon, from the information icon here. And um, after that, I can just say that um, I would like to identify uh, priority areas. Um, and, and then just I'll be able to run my analysis. I can just check how many credits would be used for this kind of analysis. And just um, again, to, to explain credits are like your uh, units that you actually use to uh, you consume to do different kinds of activities within Africa Geoportal. So once I run my analysis, uh, it will just basically take the information from my CSV, append it to my uh, county boundaries. And from that point, I'll be able to visualize this information by counties. So as a user within Africa Geoportal, you may have 
uh, the need to perhaps uh, just get an understanding of um, the kind of, of credit you may have, the kind of access you may have and so on. Uh, you'll be able to do that using your settings, which are just under your, your uh, profile icon over there. Once you go to my settings, uh, you'll be able to just access information such as what kind of um, access you've been given in terms of the kind of user you are, which we have set everyone as a contributor. Uh, and then um, the amount of credits you have, which is uh, everyone gets 500 um, credits to begin with and all the other settings that you may want to apply. So once our analysis is done, uh, we'll be able to just visualize this information using a number of attributes. In my case, I have the total respiratory information as well as access to practitioners. And once I'm able to select that, you'll see that with smart mapping, again, my visualizer here is able to respond and just look at the data, give me different options for visualizing this data. So I'd like to look at it in terms of relationships, whereby I'm using two values to guide whoever may be using my particular map to see that uh, where will be the high pri uh, priority areas or the areas where we can concentrate on giving the vaccines. So in my case, you can see that automatically we have for Trupana County, where we have high um, ratio of access for, of, of the population to doctors. That means one doctor is serving a large number of people. And also we have a high risk ratio, which means that all those respiratory diseases are quite high within the county and so on. And still, I'm able to just play around with some of these settings just to make sure that this visualization is easy to consume and so on. So once I've just put in those settings I may require, and uh, this finishes loading, uh, I'll be able to just apply the, the visualization, then save my map and actually share it with different people who may find use for it. So for you to be able to save, um, you can just click on save. Uh, I was able to see that this is something that has already been um, demonstrated in some of, in the demo island, I think some of you are already there. Uh, so I can just put in a title just to make it easier for people to know what this is about. I can put in tags and the tags make it easier for other people to access your data or to be able to search for this information and make use of it. Then I can just put in a summary, which is a brief description on what this particular map is about. So that when someone tries to access this information, they'll actually use all this uh, combined to be able to access the information. So once that is done, again, I can come to share my particular map. So I have different options. Uh, given that Africa GeoPortal is a collaborative portal, we strongly encourage that you use the options that are given there. That is, you can give it uh, to the public or you can limit it to um, a number of people within the organization or some of the groups that you may have formed within the organization. And once you're able to do that, uh, you can use this link to share it with people either by email or on your social media um, accounts. Uh, you're able to embed this in a site and definitely you're able to use uh, one of the many configurable um, applications we have to create a web map, uh, sorry, a web application out of this. So once I click done, uh, I'll be able to give access to people uh, to this particular web map uh, where they're able to just interact with the data and see um, where the key priority areas for uh, issuing out uh, vaccines. Yeah, so we strongly encourage uh, for many of you who may be um, ready to use available content there that you just uh, sign up and start using the content there. We are available to support you through various ways. We have a, a very strong community of users, uh, which is growing by the day. We have been able to double the amount of users or the number of users over the course of the year and we expect to have more and more people using the data there as well as um, more and more people also contributing uh, to the data that's there. Yeah, so that's it. I think I'll just um, give it back to Lorraine. Thank you. Sorry guys, I was on mute. Thanks very much for that, Pauline. I hope that was um, useful for people to see how you can quickly get started and get going. And as Pauline mentioned, there is a ton of learning material uh, where you can start um, mapping yourself. Uh, so just to close, we, uh, we wanted to um, wish you a happy mapping. Please keep mapping. We also wanted to point out uh, two mapping competitions that are actually ongoing right now. Uh, one is by uh, RCMRD and the other one is uh, the um, 
story map competition for sustainable development goals, um, which you can find on editor.com. Uh, also, please follow us on, on Twitter. Um, if you follow at Africa Geo Portal, you'll see information, tips and hints, and, and other interesting uh, tidbits 